Hello. Hey guys, how's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Doing well. Doing some painting. Yeah. Hey. Meet you. Yeah, good to meet you too. All right. Um, so you are a, a professional alto sax player. Uh, you are a freelancer. I'm yeah. So I've been in the industry since I recording and performing professionally since I was twelve. Play all the saxes, sing, write. So our first question is, uh, is your experience with intersectionality and race within your field of work? Sure. I mean, it's pretty unusual. When I first got started in the jazz world, which is the, the type of music I was interested in from a young age because of improvisation, I had very little knowledge about, you know, the, the different genders and races and people who are affiliated in in jazz besides like the records and stuff that I listened to but at the time like before I started saxophone I had a very small list of artists that I knew um, and then as I started to study the music my knowledge grew but I found out pretty quickly when I started in jazz and playing the saxophone that it was much more rare to see women in jazz and even more rare to see Asian and Asian women in jazz. Uh, my heritage is Korean. And that was, you know, challenging at times, not because a lot of things that people would say. Some of it is that was actually kind of unspoken from an early age. You know, when I would see women in jazz, it was such an inspiration for me. Like I didn't have any female saxophonist that I was actively that I knew about so once I got a little deeper into the music like I met the great drummer producer Terry Lynn Carrington Esperanza Spaulding bass player singer she was also really encouraging to have me come sit in with her um, I, but I think I was going through a lot of those experiences for the first time and trying to figure them out you know in the moment yeah your identity so would you say uh your race and your uh, gender, would you say that has negatively or positively uh, impacted your like standing or like your, your image today? I wouldn't really pen, you know, this was put it all in a bucket of this was all together. This is positive or this is negative or this is an advantage or a disadvantage. I think um, I think it's really important to have role models like you were just mentioning, Josh, um, I know for me now, like I've been out there professionally doing it. There's young women and Asian women who say to me, like, I didn't think I could be a professional musician or playing saxophone or playing jazz. And after seeing what you're doing, like, I feel like I can do it. I feel very blessed to, even with the challenges that come with race and gender and certain experiences that have happened with that to then still move forward and be like, you know, to be a role model for others, to let other young women know that they absolutely have this place and should be stepping into, you know, their power. And that's, um, that's really important to me. And I'm always just so excited to see, I've been seeing more and more young girls like embracing all the instruments and saxophone. Um, I, I think we need even, even more of it, you know, the numbers in the music industry of women who are doing, whether they're producers or songwriters or on the business end, it's it's still very, very low. Um, and so I'd like to see that, you know, growing. Uh, what challenges would you say you as an individual sort of face in the industry? Well, I think as an independent artist, there's challenges, right? Because you have to build your own business and there's no playbook for how to do that. You know, you're, I'm a self-employed individual growing my team and with that comes the creative decisions and the the aspect to own one's own music you know and and what we're create what I'm creating but it also has challenges of whether it's figuring out how um, distribution models or um, on the business side of things so, so in the independent artist side I think you just have to be really agile you know and be moving fast on your feet and figuring things out and in trial and error. Um, so I don't like to think about challenges as this like thing that you come up against and you're just like, well, that's a challenge. I can't do it. You know, I really like to think about these challenges as like, all right, how can I try to crack this code and try a bunch of different things? And this is a great point of growth, you know, to figure out. And from there, how do we keep, how do we keep moving? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's, cracking the the code of of challenges 
I, I haven't really heard uh, many people speak that way of, or like think that way, mm -hmm. uh, that mindset. So that's pretty inspiring for just trying to just maneuver through life. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing, well, thanks. And the other thing that I like to push forward to all students, like where you guys are at in your schooling and in the creative arts field, um, it's like technology is right now moving so fast, right? And it's like, I see so much potential, even when you look at AI, I see that as an incredible opportunity and also a disruptor. And that's a challenge, but it, it depends on how you look at it. It could be a challenge or it could be a, a place of opportunity. You know, if my mindset behind technology, it's like, dive in, learn it, learn to work with it, adapt to it. Cause it's not, it's here and it's just going to continue to be here. You know, that's not going to change. What made you want to, uh, just be in this industry and pursue this, uh, art form? Well, I was pretty lucky that, you know, at the time I was so young, I, it, I couldn't even wrap my head around the idea of becoming a professional artist. It's something that I just fell into. And honestly, I'm just very blessed and grateful to this day because it's still what I love. I love doing. I love performing, recording, writing, being in the creative world. Um, but yeah, when it comes to building a career, like how does one do that? You know, of course, there's these like things that come up that you couldn't even write, like the timing of how things happened and the people that you met, you meet, which is something that I tell my students to just like, get out there, meet everyone, take every opportunity. Like in the beginning of your career, you absolutely need to do that. Even if you want to just be doing, you know, music um, and performing, but you got to know the nuts and bolts of how the business part runs. That's definitely a good thing to to let people know about. Cause I, I think when it comes to performing arts, people only ever focus on the performing arts aspect of it, that they don't really think about all the other aspects. Uh, aspects that go into it like the business and the and that's definitely a good thing to be teaching for sure the other thing that's really important in this business is to just this connection so you can't start early enough in my book and that could be starting from the connections you make at school there's a bunch of the connections that I made from my time at Berkeley and even my time at jazz camp when I was in middle school that have now flowered into relationships years later it's so really important like it starts right now it's gonna be a well, thank you very much for for taking some time to talk with us yeah. very appreciated and it helps us out a lot too keep in touch it's really great to meet you both and thank you for hitting me up and i i wish you all the best with your class and with um with your time at your university you're just getting started there so you know mm -hmm. so my pleasure yes. Yeah, it was great to meet you. You too, Nick. You too, Jess. All, All right. right. You have a great rest of your day. You too.